Okay, just for everybody right now, let's kind of do a couple of trials. Let's do the history of essentially cetuximab's development. And my favorite study, Heinz, is, is the Bond study. I Mine love, too. I love this study. And yeah. uh, it's, uh, uh, so maybe take a second yeah. and where this story really begins in colorectal cancer. Go ahead. So uh, probably many of you remember the Bond study because it was a beautiful design study to test single agent activity of cetuximab versus cetuximab in combination with ibinotecan in patients refractory to alternative care. And I think I was extremely excited when I saw the results because we had for the first time an agent, a monoclonal antibody without any cytotoxic combinations which showed efficacy because the response rate, I think, were about 10 or 12 percent. Um, there was progression-free survival, overall survival. So that was the first time we saw an antibody where we had no other treatments which worked. Yeah. And so a 10 percent response rate in a completely unenriched patient population. That's correct. It, it, there, no k master. That was well before. But was, what was even more exciting that in patients who had irinotecan before, they got irinotecan again and got the monoclonal antibody and suddenly you doubled the response rate. It was over 20%. PFS over four months, survival over eight months in patients who had no other treatment options available. So we learned a lot how important the EGF receptor pathway is in the outcome and inhibiting this pathway shows and gives us clinical results. Really meaningful. And then the combination with chemo may be much more powerful than a single agent antibody. So I think that set the basis for the development of this antibody into the clinical practice, coming from the refractory line, moving slowly forward to second, and as we now discuss also today, in first line. So I think it's a wonderful example how to understand molecular biology and maybe hopefully learn over time selecting the patients more appropriately to achieve the best clinical outcome. So Marwan, phase two randomized trial gets this drug approved in the United States, right? Um, Rick Pazder would be very pleased because that, you know, he says that happens, there it was. <laughs> but we had to then prove that this drug had, uh, you know, advantage in a randomized trial. And the Canadians were nice enough to do that study and a really important study with right. this drug. Describe right. So, so the CO17 study is, is actually a, a very important study because this is the first study that proved that anti-EGFR therapy improves overall survival. Uh, the, the bond did set up the stage, but we didn't have really a control of no treatment, and we did not have an improvement in overall survival on the bond study. Uh, on the CO17 study, we have a best supportive care versus cetuximab in patients who failed every chemotherapy possible that is approved, all cytotoxics. And what this study showed, a 1.5 months improvement in overall survival in unselected patient population. These were patients who were not selected for KRAS mutations when they were enrolled in this study. But I think what differentiates this study as well is that it's, the fir it's, it's really one of the first few studies that also look at KRAS mutations. And it shows us that when you really select your patients appropriately, when you have patients with KRAS wild type tumor, and now we know it's RAS wild type tumor, that you actually almost double overall survival without even using a cytotoxic. I think this was the first time when we have about a four months plus improvement in overall survival with, with an additional drug uh, in, in our armamentarium. So no, no question, this was really a good addition and set the stage for moving this compound further. And I think also it set to bar as to when you move your drug to the first line or second line with your anti-HFR therapy, how much do you want to improve? If in the refractory setting, you improve your overall survival by four months to five months, where if you want to move this up front, you probably want to see an improvement of more than four months, or else why do you want to subject your patient to dermatological toxicities? So I think not only do we set the stage here for, for EGFR targeting in metastatic colorectal cancer, but we set a certain bar mm. as to when we move our anti-EGFR up further, how much do we want to achieve? Yeah, it's really, really terrific. 1.5 months in an unenriched, that's, that's better than 1.4 months, so. <laughs> um, but unenriched, so, that's it. so we're still unenriched. We're in the unenriched world, and then we wanted to more officially move it into the second line, um, and so the EPIC study was done. Johanna, tell us a little bit about that study and frustrations with that trial. Right? Yes, you know, so this was interesting. It was almost the opposite of the Bond study. Mm -hmm. So here they took second-line patients and they randomized them to a Renotecan alone or a Renotecan plus Cetuximab. 
And in their study design, what frustrated everybody is they powered it um, to look at progression-free survival. So they said, okay, let's compare the progression-free survival renotecan versus arenotecan plus cetuximab. And they met their overall endpoint, showing an improvement in progression-free survival, adding cetuximab to arenotecan. But the problem was when it came down to overall survival, they actually saw no improvement in overall survival. And the reason was is that cetuximab was commercially available at that point. So the patients who were on the arenotecan alone arm eventually went on to receive cetuximab. Interestingly enough, it was, a, it was a, um, a good learning point as well because it told us that if the overall survival is just as good whether you use it in second line in combination versus potentially single agent later line and you get the same benefit, maybe thinking about things like rash, should we go ahead and wait? And I'm, I'm wondering if that's what happened within the United States in terms of utilization of cetuximab is people now wait to expose patients to that toxicity until later line because the overall survival wasn't different.